I'm going to do a little follow-up video showing the warm-up time of the 8920A with the optional oven reference. I um, replaced, this is the original crystal, the original oven, and it was a little drifty and it, it uh, had a bit of hysteresis to it where if I left the analyzer uh, untouched or not powered on for a period of time and powered it on, it would... Uh, had a tendency to be a bit low in frequency and it would slowly age up in frequency over a period of a couple days. And then it would be steady for a while as long as you used it, but if you didn't use it for a while, it'd reset and you would have to let it warm up again for a while. So I found some uh, eBay new old stock. This is the original OFC branded uh, crystal oven. And it's also the same part number as this Corning. So it turns out Corning, um, OFC became Corning, which became Vectron, which became uh, Microchip. So um, I can't find any data sheets on these, but I did find, <clears throat> did figure out the pinout, uh, ground, VCC, oven, um, voltage air correction, and TTL output for the 10 meg uh, square wave. Um, and I, re I, I, I bought a couple of these and I ran them on the bench for a while and uh, found that one of them had 10 times less drift than the others and it warmed up very nicely and and um, it was very quick. It didn't have a lot of overshoot and it would settle back down where it needed to be very quickly. So um, after running it on the bench for a while, I installed it. Did some other work to the 8920A as well. But uh, here's just a real quick, we're starting up cold. This has been off all night. Got my single generator here with an external reference, which is a pair of GPS uh, discipline oscillators uh, over here. Um, so this reference is going to be very accurate. Um, levels minus 10 dBm at 1 gig. I'm going to fire this up from cold. Uh, the frequency counter over here is looking at the 10 meg reference output from the analyzer. So we'll see this come up in frequency as it warms up. It should overshoot a little bit and come back down. And you'll see the frequency counter and the analyzer reading one gigahertz. Well, one gigahertz being 100 times greater than the reference is going to uh, exaggerate the frequency error 100 times. So let's, uh, let's turn it on from cold here and see how this does. You can see the reference oscillator here. It goes through a boot up sequence where it hasn't applied its voltage error correction yet, not until it gets past its self test and you'll see the frequency will jump. And it'll get much closer here in a second. I meant to start a uh, stopwatch, so sorry about that. So we'll pretend that's been running for 10 seconds already. Okay, now I'm gonna set this up for antenna in. Here's it reading a gig gigahertz right now. It's um, about 8K high, because this is warming up, this is, um, basically 50 hertz low, and this is a 50K high. So as this warms up, the two will eventually match here, and we'll see how long it takes to get to that point. Now, too bad I can't focus on both at the same time, huh? That's okay, we'll just watch the frequency counter here. And I'll focus in on the stopwatch here in a minute. This is a nicer instrument to watch anyways. I did replace, well I'll talk here while it's warming up, I did replace the um, CRT with the uh, um, Simon Kahn Labs uh, uh, New Scope Junior LCD kit. Uh, while I was at this I replaced the uh, all the capacitors and the power supply and there was, there was a few of them. So all new caps, new LCD screen, new uh, more stable oven, and I changed out the BR two thirds lithium battery in the memory card. So it's like a brand new fresh unit. You can see it's already peaked and now it's coming back down. We'll zoom in here and focus on the 10 meg reference output of the um, A920. You can see it coming down. It's, it's under a 10th of a hertz in air at this point. And it's been going right now for a minute and 50 seconds. So about two minutes, it gets it really close. 
So at one gigahertz, we're showing we're off by three hertz. So two minutes, it's off by two hertz now at one gig. So two minutes warm up from cold. That's not bad, that's pretty good. Um, now it's bang on. And if we go over here, frequency counter, we can see it's less than one millihertz off. That's 9.999999.9, well, okay, 8.4. So 15 millihertz low in frequency from 10 meg. That's pretty good. You can see down here on the frequency counter, it's reading one gig plus one to two hertz. Well, there you go. It doesn't take long to warm up at all. Where are we at? Two minutes and 46 seconds, so three minutes. All right, take care. And uh, we'll do a part B to the HP 920A warm up. So one of the crystals I had to buy a couple of them because I had to figure out the pin out, um, what, what the pins did. And unfortunately, I blew one of them up that I bought from eBay by applying 12 volts to the TTL output. It didn't like that. It stopped having an output. The oven still worked, which allowed me to trace out, okay, of course, ground, which is tied to the chase uh, or the chassis here. Uh, and then this pin here is the uh, VCC for the internal circuitry and the, the clock and the crystal and the TTL. And this guy over here is just the oven, power for the oven. And uh, this is our voltage error correction. Uh, so uh, five volts is, is pretty well center, so probably uh, a zero to 10 volts uh, for its uh, voltage error correction. And you can see it's, it was hermetically sealed or soldered all the way around. So I put this on uh, a hot plate and uh, melted the solder and was able to get it apart, take it apart. And this is what I found inside. So we got a, a little bit of a insulation foam in here. It was in the top. Then we got, we have the circuit board and um, I uh, unsoldered the pins on that. It comes out, more insulation. And then here's the actual oven. I unsoldered the little transistor here they're using for the heat source. And you can see in here there's a, a drilled into the um, drilled into the aluminum in here. There's a temp sensor underneath the uh, uh, heat source. So I unsoldered that. So let's take this out. nicely machined cavity for the hermetically sealed crystal. So you have a hermetically sealed crystal that fits inside this heat mass, makes an oven for the crystal, which has a small thermal pad between it and the circuit board. So the entire circuit board will become warm and pretty well stabilized and sandwiched in here with the uh, the insulation material and then of course the five posts which are fed through little glass uh, hermetically sealed insulators to the outside and uh, that's all there is to it so it's just a small so you got a crystal you're gonna have your amplifier your uh, TTL buffer uh, and your oven control circuitry in here that's probably a small op amp um, and uh, that's all there is to it. So that's the inside of uh, this particular crystal oscillator. Uh, this one was uh, branded and made by Corning. Um, same thing as the OFC here. It's this Corning part number MC857X4. This was a dash 004, which I believe is just a slightly different, slightly newer revi revision where this date code here is uh, ninth week of 1998. The date code on this one was uh, something like the 13, 13th week of 2000. So I'm sure it was just a slightly uh, updated revision. Um, 
but uh, unfortunately I'm not going to take apart the actual crystal. You can see there's some laser etched numbers in there underneath this yellow sticker in here. Um, I can't quite make out what they are without taking them apart. Anyways, it's kind of neat.